This video was brought to you by my beautiful Patreon community and my YouTube channel members. Thank you so much. Welcome, you 45,000 lovers of freedom and the 80% of you who haven't subscribed yet to another installment of JW Broadcasting. In this episode, Daddy's Plane is going to show us why Jehovah's enemies should be trembling in fear. And be sure to stick till the end because we're going to be getting a sneak peek into an upcoming JW convention and an introduction to a new animated series. Yeah, it's about to get culty. You know, as always, we're doing the cringe challenge, so if you cringe, you lose. And when you cringe, let me know the exact moment you lost it. Are you ready? Let's go. So unless you've been living under a rock these past couple of months, you probably know by now that Watchtower is not doing very well. And there was a recent letter sent to the congregations that disclosed that the amount of Bible studies conducted has gone down in more than a few countries. Wow, color me surprised, who could have seen this coming? I've said it before and I'll say it again, Jehovah's Witnesses are less interested in the ministry than ever. The zeal has never recovered since COVID and the religion is currently going through a rebranding campaign. Now they allow beards, now they allow pants for girls and you can now say hello to this fellowship people but only at the Kingdom Hall. Remember you should still treat them like lepers outside of the Kingdom Hall. All of these changes are an effort by Watchtower to make their religion a little bit more palatable. Watchtower has been forced to make some of these changes by the recent loss in court. And you can be sure that they're not going to do it without a bit of bitching and moaning. So daddy's playing. The stage is all yours. Welcome everybody to JW Broadcasting. My co-host is brother Isaac Murray. It was given name as Isaac, but we all call him Saki. I'm so glad to see you, Saki, because we've got a lot of work today. Damn, look at all these new camera angles displaying each of David's wrinkles in 4K high definition. That comb over is hanging on to your life. David, please just shave it off. There's no shame in that. We call the Bible God's written word, and rightly so. But long before writing was invented, Jehovah expressed his purpose in words. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. Through Isaiah, Jehovah is telling us that he will always accomplish his purpose. So no matter how powerful fighters against that purpose seem to be, they will always lose in the end. I love how it took David's plane a total of 40 seconds to start getting fired up. <laughs> this dude is a warmonger at heart. I mean, he did declare war on apostates like two years ago. False rumors are often spread during wartime. Brothers, this is war. We need to put up a hard fight for the faith as if our life depended on it because it does. So as we briefly covered this atrocious talk, notice how Splain uses inflammatory words like enemies or opposers to create an us versus them mentality. This is a key feature in religious cults, as David's about to show us. Remembering that will help us when we're faced with opposers who seem unbeatable. So I thought we might consider some Bible examples that illustrate the point. Jehovah promised the Israelites that he would give them the land of Canaan as an inheritance. The Canaanites had other ideas. They'd heard of Jehovah's powerful works in Egypt, but they fought against him anyway. They learned, they learned at their cost, that fighters against God always lose. Well, not necessarily. The Old Testament is riddled with stories of the Israelites losing against their enemies, and their defeat is often attributed to their disobedience to Yahweh. Couldn't that also be implied of you as an organization? I mean, you want to pretend that you are God's chosen people today. So wouldn't that mean that Jehovah is going to abandon you if you prove to be disobedient to him? Hell, that's even implied in the parable of the faithful slave that you love to quote. <clears throat> but if ever that evil slave says in his heart, my master is delaying, and he starts to beat his fellow slaves and to eat and drink with the confirmed drunkards, the master of that slave will come on a day that he does not expect, and in an hour that he does not know, and he will punish him with the greatest severity, and will assign him in his place with the hypocrites. Is that not what we're seeing today, Splain? It seems to me you are the evil slave. You beat down on your followers with 
cruel disfellowshipping doctrines and constant fear-mongering. If Jehovah was ever on your side, then he has clearly abandoned you at this point. Or maybe this was a man-made religion all along, and you're just coming to grips with that fact. We certainly don't want to be fighters against Jehovah God. Oh, oh, scary! Oh, 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 shiver my timbers! Shut up, man! How else can we work along with Jehovah's purpose? We can do that by being involved in the preaching work. The word has gone out. This good news of the kingdom must be preached in all the inhabited earth. Many have tried to prevent that from happening. In the early 20th century, a few prominent brothers opposed the organization's efforts to get everyone involved in the preaching work. Those dignitaries were quite happy to get all dressed up and give public talks to large audiences. But they refused to lower themselves to go from house to house. I don't know, Splain. I've never seen you or your buddies go door to door before. Like, the only photos where you are preaching door to door are official watchtower propaganda. Remember, you hold like godlike status in this religion. So, why is it that not a single JW has ever taken a photo of you going door to door? The only time you descend upon the realm of us mortals is when you give a talk at conventions, much to the worship of your followers. They were fighting against God, and the angels soon sifted them out. Most of them were never heard of again. Even in countries where there's a measure of religious freedom, Fighters against God have tried to prevent us from carrying out our commission. You need a permit to go from house to house. You can't offer magazines on the street. You people are a dangerous sect. I love how he avoided using the word cult. No one is calling you a sect, Splain, even though you totally are. You are both a sect and a doomsday cult, and you should totally be held under scrutiny. They've even enacted laws directed at stopping our work. Unless they change their ways, those lawmakers are going to be in big trouble. The word has gone out. As you go, preach. That great work will be accomplished, with their support or in spite of them. He's such a bitter old man, isn't he? Oh man, governments won't let us spread our toxic propaganda without restrictions. These mean apostates won't leave us alone. <laughs> they will see, Jehovah's gonna show them. The governing body is so high and mighty when they sit in front of their cameras and in front of their followers, but just drag their ass to court and they capitulate immediately. Just look at Jeffrey Jackson when he appeared in the Australian Royal Commission back in 2015. And do you see yourselves as Jehovah God's spokespeople on earth? Uh, that, I think, would seem to be quite presumptuous to, to say that uh, we are the only spokesperson that God is using. Uh, the, clear, the, the scriptures clearly show uh, that uh, someone can act in harmony with God's Spirit in uh, giving comfort and help in the congregations. But uh, if I could just clarify a little, going back to Matthew 24, uh, clearly, Jesus said that in the last days, and Jehovah's Witnesses believe these are the last days, there would be a slave, a group of persons who would have responsibility to care for the spiritual food. So in that respect, uh, we view ourselves as trying to fulfill that role. I think this is still one of the most shocking clips about the governing body like ever, because this was a perfect opportunity to give a bold witness, to say, yes, your honor, we do consider ourselves to be God's channel, actually, and unless you listen to us, you're gonna perish real soon at Armageddon. But no, he just squirmed like the cowardly wombat he is, and I suspect Splain would do exactly the same thing if he was dragged to court. All of these frauds would croak at the first instance of actual persecution, but since they're hiding away in their ivory towers, for now, they feel free to trash talk on the so-called Opposers of Jehovah, aka 
anyone who calls them out on their crap. Well, as we mentioned, fighters against God sometimes seem to get away with their acts of rebellion, but they're on a slippery slope. I can't express it better than David did in Psalm uh, 37, 1 and 2. Do not be upset because of evil men or envious of wrongdoers. They will quickly wither like grass and shrivel like green new grass. So, when you hear about powerful opposers who seem to be untouchable, remember what we've discussed. These men may seem to prosper for a while, but since they're fighting against God, they're more to be pitied than to be feared. They're on the wrong side. They are fighting a losing battle. Oh, shiver me timbers, Splane. Please, guys, send this video to the Norwegian government so they can have a piece of this dude. <laughs> what a delusional cult leader. He really believes that the sovereign of the universe is on his side. Despite the fact that if Jehovah really did exist, he clearly didn't bother helping out the Watchtower win against the Norwegian courts. You declared war on apostates, Splane. And we're giving you war, so that's what you get for running your mouth. Thank you, Brother Splain, for your encouraging discussion. Fighters against God always lose. <laughs> what a massive circle jerk. Now we get the life story of this old lady who endured persecution in Europe way back then. You know, actual religious persecution? A lifetime of serving Jehovah for a paradise that never showed up. No money can pay for the blessings I have. Life is the most important thing there is because no matter how much you have, you can't prolong your life. And then learning about Jehovah who gave his son to save us from all those terrible things. Why wouldn't you use your life to serve him? Well, Grandma, I also think life is the most precious gift we have. And that's why I would never spend my one life serving an invisible entity in the sky, waiting for a utopia that is never going to happen. Trust in Jehovah and do what you can do to serve him from your heart. He will never leave you. Sister de Toffoli's story is not unlike what many of our brothers are going through right now. The following dramatization is based on the real-life experiences of some of our brothers. It's been three days since the bomb started to fall. When the fighting got closer, we hid. But I'm not sure how much longer we can stay here. Some in the congregation plan to leave the country. Mother says we'll try too when the shelling calms down, but it feels like it may never stop. Jehovah, can you still see us? You know that no JW broadcasting would be complete without the persecution porn segment, and this time they use the suffering of Ukrainian refugees to claim that Jehovah's organization is the only place where you're gonna receive help from strangers. Humanitarian agencies apparently don't exist. I learned that a war can't stop Jehovah. He'll always find a way to care for his people. Nothing can take Jehovah's love away. I don't know where he will guide us, but I trust him. Well, hopefully he guides you away from religious charlatans, like explain. Luda trusted in Jehovah and was not overreached by fear or discouragement. What does it mean to be overreached? Oh, I don't know, Saki. What is the meaning of overreach? It's such a complicated word. I need someone to explain it to me. And so we have to be very careful at all times because our enemy, the devil, is out to trick us, deceive us, overtake us on any occasion possible. And he has quite a variety of tactics, doesn't he? Now Harold is going to tell us about the different traps used by the devil because apparently he knows the devil inside and out. The devil will give us bait sometimes and it appears that it's very pleasurable. There's nothing wrong here. It's harmless. But with the devil, there is always the hook. 
always the hook that can cause spiritual, emotional, mental, and even physical harm. It can literally cost us our life if we get tricked to thinking that uncleanness will not hurt us. Harold doesn't bother mentioning what this uncleanness actually refers to, but he's probably talking about watching porn and masturbating. Remember kids, the devil's greatest bait is the masturbate. Now, besides pleasure and the temptations that go with that, the devil will also use pain and suffering. Is the devil into bondage or something? The August 15th, 2002 Watchtower said this about how a great test can come from our fellow worshipers. It says this, Satan still makes use of misguided counsel or thoughtless remarks from friends and fellow believers. Discouragement from within the congregation can undermine our morale more easily than persecution from without. So what can the devil use? Our own brothers can say or do things sometimes, and the devil will play on that and amplify that and cause one to stop, stop serving Jehovah. Wait, so if the devil uses people in the congregation to tempt us, what's the point of going to the meetings? Isn't the Kingdom Hall supposed to be like this safe haven from the world? <laughs> and why would God allow the devil to manipulate people inside the Kingdom Hall? It's just too many questions, not enough answers. And what Jehovah allows today, we can be sure, whatever he allows the devil to do, to cause us emotional pain, physical pain, to even persecute us, perhaps even kill some of us. By means of his son, Christ Jesus, Jehovah has made a way to break up the works of the devil completely. What? So why doesn't Jehovah prevent the devil from causing any trouble in the first place? It's like a parent that allows a psychopath to run around in his house and terrorize his children. But when the kid asks, hey dad, why are you allowing this to happen? The dad tells him, well son, I'm gonna take you to the hospital afterwards, so it's all good. What kind of psychopath is this? It seems like we're all pawns in Big J's game, like a sim simulator. And the devil is just another piece in his sick chessboard. Satan may even use family members who mean well to discourage us from serving Jehovah. Somebody nerf this Satan fellow, he's just too powerful. What's next? Are you gonna tell me that the devil is gonna use the governing body to draw us away from Jehovah? Oh wait. I tell my kids each day we live as a gift from God. How we live it is our gift to Him. The truth is only hard if we fight it. If we listen to Jehovah, if we do what we're asked, the blessings will catch up with us the best day we could have here, and we know we've all had wonderful days, is nothing in comparison to the first day in the new world. It's such an amazing thought to think that all we have to do is make good choices now, and we're gonna be there. Don't forget, you also have to sell your soul to the Watchtower Corporation. Anxious thoughts at times we all may feel but when we pray, His promise is real. So the music video for this month is actually not that bad. It's just this song about how praying gives you peace like a river. Compared to last month's culty ass video that told us to feed our faith and starve our doubts, this video is innocent enough. And it has some beautiful scenery. I wish I knew where this was because it looks quite nice. Next, we get another episode of Iron Sharpens Iron, where JWs learn how to improve their preaching slash manipulation techniques to draw people into their religion. Have you ever had days like this in the ministry when it seemed that there was just no one to talk to? Yeah, like all of the time, because people are usually out working or at the park with their families or inside watching some Netflix. Now, how about our couple getting back into their car? By being observant, Hi. they too were able to give a witness. The more observant we are, the more opportunities we may find. The key is to remain focused on our objective, which is to give a witness. 
And that can happen in between doors just as easily as it could happen at the doors. You know, one of the best parts about leaving this religion is not feeling the constant need to bombard your neighbors with religious propaganda. Now, Victor Anibaba tells his viewers to use the JW Library app to target refugees in their countries. It really works. Let's look at an example. Hi there, we're making brief visits on our neighbors. Hi, no, no speaking English, no, no. Oh, uh, Arabic? No. Oh, marhaba. 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 Oh, did they call me in the language Shweya. What a great way to give a witness to even more in our territory. You can barely get J-dubs to go door knocking anymore, and now you expect them to memorize entire greetings in a foreign language? Get out of here, man. Enter Magnoon. What excellent suggestions for the ministry. I look forward to using them during our upcoming regional convention campaign. Would you like to have a look at what to expect from this year's convention program? Well, it's not a JW convention preview if it doesn't start with scenes of tragedy, am I right? Good news is needed now more than ever. The good news we need is not of human origin. It originates with the giver of real hope. Jehovah God, and it centers on his son, Jesus Christ. What is this good news? Can we trust it? And can it help people right now? This year's Declare the Good News Convention of Jehovah's Witnesses will bolster confidence in God and his son. The good news of God's kingdom will help you to cope with life now and prepare you for eternal life in the future. Now that is good news. Hey look, it's Jeffrey, the shining example of sharing the good news of Jehovah in front of the courts. We have a lot to look forward to at this year's convention. So that's the convention for this year, boys and girls. It's gonna be centered around the life of Jesus. Yeah, Jesus, you know, the guy whom JWs throw a memorial for every year? And this is gonna be the invitation for the convention. Look, it's the angels that celebrated the birth of Christ, something Jehovah probably disapproved of because Jehovah hates birthdays. We also get this preview of the new Jesus movie that's gonna be divided into a whole bunch of episodes, so it's gonna be like a mini-series. So let's take a preview at episode one. Greetings, you highly favoured one. Jehovah is with you. Do not be afraid, Mary. You will become pregnant and give birth to a son. And you are to name him Jesus. These awful fake beards, I swear. I wonder how many episodes they shot before they instituted the beard policy change. Uh, because it's gonna be a continuity error if we see fake beards and then real beards. It's gonna be a real doozy. The true light that gives light to every sort of man was about to come into the world. All right, so credit where credit is due. Uh, the photography actually improved quite a lot since the last preview we got. It looks competently shot, except for the fake beards. Man, baby Jesus looks a bit too old, so I guess they were feeding him with steroids or something. 
but at least they didn't try to CGI a newborn baby. So I guess we can give them a pass for now. The genuine good news according to Jesus. That's what we're gonna have. I'm actually looking forward to debunking this propaganda as soon as it comes out. So yeah, they've been teasing it for years now. It's actually gonna happen now. And we also have the first episode of the new series titled Learn From Jehovah's Friends. And it's like if Cartoon Network and Watchtower had a baby. All right, who just in front of the Bible? Hey there, ready for the final product? Ta-da! Oh, it was just paint. It's the three <laughs> Hebrews in the fiery furnace. Uh, it could use some work. Your painting sucks, man. That sure is an exciting account. But how did they end up in a scorching oven? Come on, I'll show you. It's a great story. Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah were just boys when they were taken to Babylon. Daniel was there too. People there were not Jehovah's friends. Well, of course they were not Jehovah's friends. Why would they be? They're Babylonians, not Jews. They wanted the Hebrews to be just like them. They gave them Babylonian names. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. No, how dare these evil heathens try to convert the religious views of these boys. How intolerant of them, trying to convert their religion. And food that Jehovah said they shouldn't eat. But together with Daniel, they obeyed Jehovah because they were his friends. Then one day, the king of Babylon told everyone to bow down and worship a statue. And anyone who didn't, would be thrown into a fiery furnace. Would the three Hebrews give in to the pressure of the king and everyone else around them? Of course not. They knew that only Jehovah deserved their worship. Where the hell is Daniel in all of this? He was probably bowing down to the statue, that little rebel. If they obeyed him before, they knew they could do it again. They declared, our God whom we serve is able to rescue us, O king. But even if he does not, we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold. Jehovah's friends always obey him. But how did Jehovah rescue them? Wow, what a cliffhanger. Why not read the whole story and find out for yourself? I must spare you the trouble. Jehovah sends an angel to give the three boys some heat immunity, then the characters are never mentioned again. The end. Make time every day to learn from Jehovah's friends. What do you think? How did Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah show that they were Jehovah's friends? By obeying him. When is it hard for you to obey Jehovah? By obeying him. And what can you do to obey Jehovah like they did. By obeying him, throw myself into fiery furnaces. So that's the new series for kids. I'ma be honest, I actually really like the animation. I think it's really cute. Uh, although the message is as silly as ever. And the cartoon also comes with an activity sheet where you cut out these little figures and paste them on this other sheet. It's super silly. It's for little babies. And if you don't know, this Bible story is usually used by JWs to encourage children to not salute the flag because saluting the flag and bowing down before a false idol is clearly the same thing. We hope you enjoyed our monthly program. And I want to thank you, Asaki, for all your help. It was really appreciated. Oh, just kiss already. From the world headquarters of Jehovah's Witnesses, this is JW. Thank you, Daddy's Plane, for blessing us once again with your unparalleled teaching skills. And thank you for letting those evil worldly opposers know what's gonna happen to them if they keep fighting against Jehovah. So guys, let me know your thoughts on this program in the comments below. And please let me know if you lost the cringe challenge because I love reading your comments. This channel would not be possible without the support of my Patreon. So if you would like to gain early access to all my videos for only $1 a month, 
please join me on Patreon or become a channel member. It's super easy and you also get to use these really fun emojis. I got like 12 available now and you can put them in your comments. They're super fun. Thank you so much for your support. Take it easy guys, have a wonderful day and stay away from the tower. I'm always stroking my dick, I got lotion on my dick when I'm stroking my shit.